I want to talk about this theorem, which I was really surprised when I first heard it. Uh, this is called Riemann series rearrangement theorem. And it says uh, conditionally convergent series can be shuffled to converge to any number you want. Uh, now, uh, for those of you who don't know what conditionally convergent series mean, uh, let me talk about uh, one example. And this example should explain everything. So. Uh, think about this example n equals to 1 through infinity negative 1 to the n plus 1 and 1 over n and it, it, if you don't like the sigma sign I can actually write them explicitly for you so think about the following series you have 1 over 1 minus 1 over 2 plus 1 over 3 minus 1 fourth plus 1 fifth and so on and so on okay and uh, this series actually converges. Uh, however, if you take the absolute value of this, uh, which will be just 1 over 1 plus 1 half plus 1 over 3, and the, the denominators are, are uh, these are arithmetic sequence. In that case, this entire thing is called a harmonic series and Harmonic series always diverge, so if you have like 1 over 1, 3 over 1, four, 5 over 1, that still diverges. This one diverges. So what you see is that if you take the absolute value of each term, then the series diverges. Uh, and this means that uh, the conclusion here is that uh, this series... does not converge absolutely okay absolutely uh, see that this this absolute value function if you apply that it doesn't converge however without the absolute value by itself it does converge so it does converge and if a se series converges without the absolute value, but it diverges when you take the absolute value, you say this is absolutely, con uh, it's conditionally convergent, okay? Conditionally convergent. So this is an example of a conditionally convergent series. And actually what follows, I, I'm just going to keep the discussion very intuitive, uh, not nothing serious, uh, rigorous, but you'll still be able to see why this Riemann series rearrangement theorem makes sense. Okay. Um, all right. So, um, because I'm just trying to make it intuitive, let's just use this as our model. Okay. And whatever discussion I do with this, you, you'll kind of see that even if uh, you're working with some other kinds of conditional convergent series, uh, it's very similar to what happens to this series. So, we're just going to use this one. Now, uh, notice that uh, here we have some terms that are positive and some terms that are negative. And uh, uh, you're allowed to re rearrange them to make it converge to a different number. So uh, I want to use some analogy. Uh, think of the positive numbers as apples and negative numbers as bananas. So you have like infinite sequence of apples and bananas. So you have such a thing. And uh, let's say adding them is like uh, eating them. Okay? And so uh, adding all, the, all of these is like having a task of eating infinitely, ma ap infinitely many apples and infinitely many bananas. It's kind of weird, but uh, just, just, just try to follow me for a moment. Okay? So you have infinitely many apples, infinitely many uh, bananas. Uh, there are two strategies here I want you to compare. See, number one strategy would be uh, you have you want to eat two apples per one banana. You can do that, right? Or you can also have two bananas per one apple. Now, uh, as I said, uh, this is just an analogy. Uh, in, in the actual summation, 1 over 1 minus 1 half plus 1 third, this would be like having 1 over 1 plus 1 third, but then minus 
I have to eat the banana, and then plus one fifth. All the odd terms are apples, because it's plus and then minus one fourth. So you do this, right? Or two bananas per one apple, that would be like having negative one half, minus one fourth, uh, and then plus one over one, and then minus one, uh, one sixth, minus one eighth, and then plus one half, and then uh, plus, uh, actually minus one tenth, and you know what I mean, right? Okay, so if you do this, and then, uh, so going back to apples and bananas analogy, if you are given the task of eating infinitely many apples and infinitely many bananas, and you uh, you try to you like apples more, so you say, okay, I'm going to eat two apples and then one banana, and you do this infinitely many times. You've still eaten all the infinitely many apples and bananas. On the other hand, here, uh, if you have uh, two bananas per one apple, uh, then you've eaten twice as a, as many bananas than apples. But then, if you do this for infinity, you still have eaten all the apples and bananas. So that's the weird situation of an infinite series. Uh, it, when in the infinity, things that uh, you think doesn't work, uh, it's impossible. In finite case, actually, it does work. So. These are two valid strategies. But if I go back to this addition analogy, you see something peculiar because now if you group these into three, just like that, two apples per one banana, and group it like this, then my, uh, plus this one, and then plus like that. And if you compare these two, you see that because here you use more pluses than minuses, it's, all, it's always the case that this is bigger than this. This is bigger than this, okay? And uh, of course, uh, even if uh, finite sums are bigger, it doesn't mean that one is bigger than the other when you do the infinity. But you can kind of see that uh, the, the difference is measurable and the difference won't be uh, like closing down any, anyway. So, so uh, if you look at the difference between these two, so it's this one versus this one, that they are the same, but then, and also this is same, so it's the difference between one third and negative one fourth. So the di difference between these two is like seven over 12. So I know that if you add this to infinity and add this to infinity, this one is, the first one is at least seven over 12 bigger than the second one. So you do see that rearranging the terms of this uh, alternating series will actually give you s something different, yeah. Uh, depending on your strategy. Okay, so once you're convinced that oh, it's possible to have rearrangement of a of of this series, the uh, the series to converge to two different things, then now uh, you have to be convinced that you can make it to converge to anything. Okay, all right, so. Then we are going to think about the following observation. Go back to the series that we're talking about. So and so. Now, if you just collect the odd terms, the positive ones, the apples, the positive ones, uh, positive ones, add to infinity because it's a it's a uh, harmonic series, right? Uh, one over one, one, three, five, that's an arithmetic sequence, so it's a harmonic series, so they add to infinity. Whereas the negative series, if you go to, the, to look at the bananas, the negative series, the negative, the minus, add also to negative infinity, okay? And this is actually quite important. All right, so uh, you have that, and then now we're, I'm going to give you another analogy. Uh, what I'm going to say is that each of these pluses, the pluses are like right arrows going right. And the negatives are like going left because it's, it's decreasing. Okay, so uh, imagine that you're, you start on the, the origin. And you're given this two arrow keys, one going right, and one going left. 
And you can press either one any time, any amount, number of times you want. Okay, you can just keep uh, hitting the right button, hitting the left button as much as you want. Okay, uh, because you have infinitely many of the positive terms and infinitely of many of the negative terms. Okay, now the catch is it's not the same thing as your keyboard cursor keys because uh, if you press one, this one once, it goes one to the right. But then if you press it again, you only get one third. So you, you, the first step is one, but the next one is one third, smaller step size than before, because the next positive number is one third. And then uh, the next time you press this is one fifth. So it's getting smaller and smaller. But notice that because this is harmonic series, uh, you can still manage to pass by anything. So uh, now what I want you to, to think about is, let's say you have a goal. You have a target point. Uh, let's say I want this series to converge to seven, because seven is a lucky lucky number. So let's try that. Then the strategy is do, doing this: just click the right arrow any number of times so that it, it does it increases increases. It's a very slow increasing series, but because it goes to infinity, eventually you will pass seven at some point. Now the moment you pass seven, then it's your time to hit the left side because you've passed it. So if you if you click the left key, the first step size is negative one half, quite bigger than the last one. So you're kind of drawn back. But then again, you can start pressing right many many times, right, until you pass by seven, and then you go back again, do that again, 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 again. And what you see is that uh, because of the way that we are uh, going back and forth, uh, this algorithm really uh, forces the summation to go to closer and closer to 7 as much as you want. So this limit would be 7. So the actual sequence that you write down will be uh, adding up to 7, uh, except that uh, you know uh, when you actually write them down, you might you, you probably have more apples than bananas because you're pressing more right keys than the left. But the catch is this is infinite sequence so uh, even if you have more apples than bananas uh, if you put it to infinity you get the same number uh, infinity so you've consumed all the apples and bananas and that's the re rearrangement that makes it to converge to 7. It could be 7 or any other number so you can kind of see why the Riemann series rearrangement theorem works. Okay.